Okay, pop quiz. Which is the old one out? A 1970s terrorist group, the Red Army Faction, who had a predilection for car bombs, Taliban leader Mullah Omar, a dolphin, or Ukraine's naval boffins? Answer, the dolphin. All the others understood the psychological as well as the physical power of the novel weapon of their day. Dolphins, however, are being used and potentially sacrificed by Russia in Sevastopol harbour to defend against the novel weapon of today, the maritime drones that Ukraine is using to blow up Russian ships. Sorry, Flipper. Most soldiers accept the hurly-burly of the battlefield. They understand the risks and have reconciled themselves to the possibility of death or injury by bullets, artillery and such like, with grim pragmatism. Oh, yeah. green. But unseen killers, chemical weapons, booby traps, weapons that don't play by the Queensbury rules of warfare, these are the stuff of nightmares and can eat away at a soldier's psychological strength. Loitering munitions in the air or at sea fit into this category of weapon. They're deadly, but pretty cheap and basic, so easy to produce in large numbers and able to attack psychological defences just as much as physical ones. Ukraine's innovation of maritime drone technology hasn't fundamentally changed the nature of warfare at sea, but has shown how the psychological dimension can be employed here too. Ukraine has now forced Russia, a country with the second biggest navy in the world, to move most of its ships in the Black Sea Fleet out of Sevastopol in Crimea and into Novorossiysk on the Russian coast. Ukraine has also sunk Russia's Black Sea flagship, the Moskva, and used maritime drones to hit the intelligence ships Ivan Kurz and Priyazovya in May and June, and a Russian landing craft and oil tanker just last week. As such, Ukraine has demonstrated the ability to hold under threat any Russian ship operating in the Black Sea. Not bad for a country without a navy. The design of these maritime drones has changed little since last year. Small, satellite-controlled powerboats fitted with day and night cameras on top and fuses at the front are filled with explosives and driven into the target. But there's a problem. As we all know, Newton's third law of motion states that for every action in nature, there's an equal and opposite reaction. What's that got to do with Captain Pugwash, I hear you ask? Well, it means any normal blast going off next to a ship will throw as much power away from the hull as it does into it. Not a very efficient way to put holes in battleships. In order to drive the maximum amount of blast into the target from the roughly 350 kilograms of explosive we think these drones are carrying, Ukraine could be using warheads with shaped charges. These devices, used on land as much as sea, send a jet of metal, usually copper, at hypersonic speed into a target. This jet, or explosively formed projectile as it's known, has no explosive charge itself, but bores through metal by sheer kinetic power. However, the process creates significant heat and there is often a secondary incendiary effect that may set off any explosives stored in the vehicles, hence the number of tank turrets we've seen blown off during the war. So a big bag of bang. However, as the size of the explosive payload has got bigger, the designers will have had to make adjustments to keep the craft seaworthy. The explosively formed projectile needs space to create the correct shape, basically a massive dart, to pierce metal. Set the thing off too close to the target and the blobs of copper will not have time to form into a dart properly and will slap into the side of the ship like a massive metal cow pad. Blast too far away and the copper will briefly form a dart shape but then keep spreading out. The effect then being a bit like a shotgun blast. Basically, as the bomb has got bigger, or the size of the engine has increased for greater range, or more technical gizmos are bolted on so the thing can keep working if hit by electronic warfare, for example, the design of the whole craft has had to change to keep the thing ship shape, operational, and manoeuvrable so as to avoid any Russian bullets being fired at it. Not that there have been many Russian bullets or other countermeasures for that matter any decent navy has developed ways of dealing with the threats. First, speed. If the target ship is going above about 20 knots, it's very difficult for a tiny powerboat filled with explosives to catch it. Plus, if the target maneuvers, creating waves and generally mucking up the water, it's even harder for the drone. Any prized vessel could have outriders searching for such threats and sentries posted with weapons trained to fire on any approaching hazard. 
harder to achieve but just as effective would be for the ship under attack to disrupt the satellite link controlling the drone. Snap that lifeline and the thing will be left bobbing about in the water. There's a role for wider society too. The towns and villages along the coast of any country at war should observe strict blackout drills, better to protect themselves, but also as a means of not silhouetting any ships at sea. But of course, Putin cannot tell the Russian people they're at war. All of which means it's astounding that despite numerous such attacks over the last 18 months, the Olenogorsky Gornyak, the Russian landing ship hit last Friday, was traveling slowly through an active war zone with nobody watching out for drones and highlighted by the lights blazing away on the nearby shoreline. Russia's inability to learn from past mistakes is one reason for Ukraine to keep using and developing these maritime drones. But right now, there are two more. First, these attacks are saying to Russia, if you want to keep trading from Novorossiysk and the other Black Sea ports, you need to let us get grain out of Odessa. This may be a more enduring way than relying on political deals through international third parties to solve the grain crisis. Second, with the counter-offensive proving harder than Kyiv perhaps expected, a steady diet of headlines and pictures showing the results of Russian strikes on civilian areas will do nothing for national morale and will, in some parts of the world, simply be ignored. Shift the narrative though and have images of drones racing towards targets at sea followed by sinking ships and the headlines change. The story then becomes one of resilience, innovation, ingenuity and the precise application of extreme violence that can strike anyone, anytime, anywhere. To Russian sailors, that sea is going to start looking a lot darker and deeper from now on. Defence In Depth is a weekly video output by The Telegraph of the big defence stories. This week, we're releasing a companion article to today's episode on the Telegraph website, which will launch tomorrow morning. Or, if you're watching this in the future, right now! Please do go and take a look for further Defence Insights and feel free to leave a comment. We'll leave a link to that article in the description. If you'd like a daily fix of content about the war in Ukraine, I'd suggest Ukraine the latest, The Telegraph podcast. Please do visit our website for the latest updates, news and analysis, or failing that, you could buy a paper. <laughs>